Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in this coronavirus infested world, welcome to another episode of Amazing Worlds, where today I am going to be talking about The Legends of the Dragonlance by Margaret Wise and Tracy Hickman. <coughs> Intro track. So, it's been a while, welcome back, been busy uh, with work and uh, life and things in general. Um, Spain is on the state of alarm, we are shut down, we cannot leave home, um, had to cancel my trip to London last minute. Um, so um, hopefully it's a chance to catch up with a bit of rhythm, uh, with a bit of um, certainly spending time with the boys and um, getting back uh, in the habit of filming once a week. So today um, I want to talk about Legends of the Dragonlance, um, Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. Here is my English edition. These are the annotated uh, legends which I actually found at my local train station when I used to live just outside of London. However, um, I don't think you get that much value for money in terms of comments and insights from uh, Weiss and Hickman in the book and if you are thinking of getting Legends of the Dragonlance, which I strongly recommend. Uh, I think you should get the ones with the original covers by Larry Elmore. Absolutely brilliant. I've got them at my parents' home and um, the artwork is incredible and it just uh, gives the whole story that little bit extra because they're really captivating and they are the kind of covers that makes you want to just pick up the book uh, without knowing much about it. So. Legends, where does it fit into the Dragonlance canon? Well, if you didn't know, please check out my video on the Dragonlance series reading order, which I'll put on a banner up here and probably in the description as well. And make sure you check out the other video I've got on the preceding trilogy to Legends, which is Chronicles of the Dragonlance. Check out link and hopefully description as well. So Legends takes place um, a few years after the events of Chronicles of the Dragonlance and uh, it presents us uh, with Caramon Majere, the warrior uh, sibling twin brother of Rysling the wizard uh, who is now an overweight, obese, drunken oaf. Um, why that is the case is because after events of Chronicles his brother Reisling has rejected him, does not want to have anything to do with him, doesn't even recognize him as a brother. Reisling, as we know from Chronicles, took a path uh, towards evil and now has become the master of the past and the present. And the premise of the trilogy, I won't spoil the ending or anything, but I will just give you the intro. It's basically Reisling has become uh, a really super powerful wizard and is intent on defying the goddess of evil and taking her place uh, in the pantheon of gods and becoming a god himself, which is a really interesting premise. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that in fantasy before. In order to do so, in order to achieve his goal, Reisling has to travel back in time and defeat uh, the great wizard of the past, Fistandantilus, uh, take his place, acquire his knowledge and eventually cross the portal into the abyss where the goddess of evil resides and challenge her in the hope of defeating her. Um, in the process, in order to cross the portal, he needs the help of a pure uh, cleric, a cleric of the god of uh, good, Paladine, so he does um, lure the priestess Chrysania to uh, travel back in time with him and help him achieve his goal. On her part, and why would Chrysania do that, being that she is a priestess of the God of Good is well because she thinks she can turn Reisling away from his chosen path and therefore thus follow him in this journey. Uh, Caramon is recruited back by the Conclave of Wizards um, in order to uh, try to stop Reisling and they send him back in time to try to stop his brother. 
um, as well and accompany Chrysania in this journey. Accidentally, the Kanda Tasselhoff barefoot is also sent back in time um, and that introduces a spanner in the works because allegedly uh, Kenders are not one of the races of creatures allowed to travel in time. Um, in the law of Dragonlands, uh, Kenders were created by sort of by accident when um, the God of Neutrality was creating dwarves in his forge, the sparks that flew out created uh, Kenders and gnomes, so they're sort of a byproduct of the creation of dwarves, and therefore they are banned race from traveling in time. And just Tasselhoff's presence introduces an unknown quantity in the equation, and things happen. So, um, the books, as usual, you get um, a map of pre cataclysm uh, Ansalon and Kryn, the world where the action takes place. So, that's very nice and it helps get into the story. Uh, for some people, the issue of the concept of traveling in time uh, can be tricky if not handled correctly. But to my mind, uh, the way that time travel is dealt with in Legends, it's really well done, it is consistent, it's got that sort of uh, back to the future feel where maybe if we travel back in time and affect events we can alter the course of history, so there is that happening there. But I think it's handled really, really well. It doesn't detract at all from the story, um, and it's a really, um, really interesting story. Um, the characterization of, of the main protagonists of the story, um, it's brilliant. So we follow Riesling on his quest for power, and we follow Caramon on his quest to save his brother. Um, however, um, he undergoes his own journey himself, and um, there are greater themes uh, in Legends uh, than maybe they were in Chronicles. Chronicles was a pure good versus evil story. Um, Legends is focused on the relationship uh, between the two twins and uh, the slight codependency uh, relationship that they've had always in the past and how each one deals with the separation um, of their lives as one goes one way and the other one goes the other. And I think the themes in Legends are far deeper, far more personal and far more meaningful than they were in Chronicles, which is why, to my mind, Legends is a superior read to Chronicles of the Dragonlands. Um, you know, you've got that theme about that sibling love slash rivalry going on there, uh, the theme of uh, ambition and what some people are willing to do and the heights that they are willing to climb in order to achieve what they so desire. You also have um, the theme of people who are so set on saving someone from the chosen path that they end up hurting themselves. And you know, it's that question. Um, you may have a, a relative or someone you care for or a friend that has or is going down the wrong path and you know, do you go all the way with them in trying to help them? Um, or when do you stop for your own sake? Um, you know, some some people have got greater capacity for, for suffering and, and helping others, and some people don't, and, and that is explored, um, I think, very tastefully and very tactfully uh, here in, in Legends of the Dragonlance. Because this is the thing with Legends of the Dragonlance. Um, this is my opinion, I don't really have research to, to, substanti to substantiate my opinion, but I think this is the case. With Chronicles of the Dragonlance, Weiss and Hickman were writing uh, for a job. Uh, check out my previous video, but it was written because of the module and the campaign setting for the role-playing games Dungeons & Dragons. Now, with Legends, I think 
they actually wanted to tell a particular story. Um, they actually picked the two more fleshed out characters from Chronicles because you could argue that most of them were very unidimensional um, and they just focused on Riesling and Carmon and their relationship and Legends is much more character driven than Chronicles was I mean the, the theme explorations that with Riesling pursuing his ambition regardless who or no matter what is quite interesting um, the, the story arc of Chrysania, uh, blinded by her devotion, both um, uh, metaphorically and in reality, is very well crafted as well. Um, Caramon's devotion to save his brother is uh, keeping him totally unaware of all the other amazingly really good things that he's got going in his life. Um, and he decides subconsciously perhaps to choose um, a really negative path for himself instead of allowing himself to be happy. Um, so there's all these themes and all these explorations and all these ideas that make Legends a much more compelling read than Chronicles. Um, and even some of the secondary characters like uh, the Dark Elf Dalamar who is sent to spy on Riesling but cannot feel but admire the heights and the prowess and the expertise that Riesling has achieved um, and, and it, you know it's one of those things where you admire the, the art not the artist isn't it um, all these things um, all these complexities all these intricacies um, are at play in legends um, so I really, really strongly recommend it. I think I read, I'm pretty certain, I read Legends before Chronicles um, when I was a child and it did not detract at all from the story. You certainly do not need to have read Chronicles uh, in order to, to enjoy uh, Legends. Um, it helps because um, if you've read Chronicles you'll be more familiar with the characters, uh, but I think the story is really strong and it stands on its own merit, on its own, on its own two feet, without the help of the Chronicles background. Um, some of the players that survived Chronicles uh, are still around in Legends, but this is not a party uh, on an adventure quest. As I said, the focus is on Riesling and Caramon, and the rest of the um, characters from Chronicles play a very secondary, and some of them even not just featured on, on a page to say they've got their own things to do and their own issues to worry about and they are totally removed from, from the story. So that's the case with the Barbarians, uh, Goldmoon and Riverwind, uh, Tannis, Half Elven, still there, Kitiara still there and they, they, there's something that they have to do but, but it's not the main focus uh, of the story. Um, in terms of setting it is I, I really enjoy Dragonlands. I mean, perhaps the books that we read in our childhood uh, are the ones that we really hold in high esteem because they had that much more profound impact on us. But I've reread Legends quite a few times as an adult and I've always enjoyed it. Uh, the world of Dragonlands, um, as I explain in my uh, Dragonlands series overview, is a very fantastical world. We've got um, and dead knights, we've got elves, we've got orcs, we've got dragons, dwarves, skanders, humans, it's, it's a very rich, very fantastical uh, world which sort of goes a little bit against modern fantasy. Modern fantasy is much more uh, stripped down, it's much more bare bones, it's much more character focused and I think a lot of the fantastical elements have been removed um, from modern fantasy, which I'm trying to come to terms with. Um, I think the stories are more grown up, more mature, um, but um, don't be put off at all by the Dragonlands um, 
title because this this is a really good read. I think I've got the firm opinion that is far superior to Chronicles, but um, as sometimes happens, it's the pioneering work that gets all the credit, um, and then the subsequent uh, sequels don't get as much creed, um, which is unfortunate because, um, as I keep saying, this is a really, really good story. Um, this edition um, contains the full Legends trilogy, uh, Time of the Twins, War of the Twins, and Test of the Twins. Um, it is a very easy read, it is very enjoyable, and um, I cannot recommend it enough. I think Legends is probably, certainly in my top five all-time uh, fantasy series, without a shadow of a doubt. Definitely, definitely, definitely up there with Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, and I'll think about a couple others to put there. Um, anyway, uh, that's all I've got for today. Thank you very much for watching. Please, please, please like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? And if you, even if you press the thumbs down button, comment uh, and let me know. Um, it's going to be a long, uh, a long couple of weeks. Uh, the school where I work has been shut. Uh, we've been told to stay home and I'm going to be in lockdown with two little boys who can't stay put. So this is going to be definitely interesting times. Anyway, until next time, please stay safe, follow advice, stay indoors, keep safe, have fun, catch up with some reading, enjoy your time. Please, please, please take care and see you next time. Bye.